that some of the uh, biggest changes we've had to make are the um, suspension of individuals coming inside the facility. So, you know, inmates who are um, receiving visits, uh, are receiving uh, special services to address their needs um, from outside providers, we've had to slow that down and pause that. And that's been one of the most substantial changes here uh, during this period of time. You know, the other thing that, you know, was a, a, an increase. So, you know, you talk about a change when we, when we look at, you know, what is done in Metro Corrections is every day sanitation is one of the things we are on top of. But what we had to do with COVID is make sure that the materials we were using and the product we were using were those that were approved by the CDC to, you know, kill the bacteria, kill the virus. And so the smell of bleach is much more prevalent, the smell of sanitizer is much more prevalent, and the scheduling of those events is much more consistent. So we're you know, cleaning high touch surfaces, we're you know, educating inmates on how to keep their area clean, we're providing clean supplies to them, and we're doing what we call a deep cleaning. So we'll move uh, inmates out of their housing unit and go in with appropriate uh, sanitizing materials and clean that entire space. Deep cleaning is happening every shift, so three times a day. That's not every housing unit, but it may be one floor today and maybe one floor the next day. So it's a very good rotation and that has not stopped. That has been consistent. And, the, and we keep uh, supplies, we keep clean supplies in the housing units. Inmates know how to use them. If they don't know, we train them and show them. And so the clean supplies are plentiful and uh, high touch surfaces are being done multiple times a day. You know, not just a single clean of a, of a light switch or a door handle. It's being done, and the inmate population is helping us. You know, we're not doing it all by themselves or by ourselves.